Hello and welcome to this video of a car in France. This is the Citroën Zara Picasso. It's a 2008 model from December. It's almost 2009. It's the newest car I've ever owned. And I bought it from a mechanic. He had done the uh, water pump, timing belt, changed the EGR valve. And he said he'd gone through the whole car and checked that everything was okay. Apparently he did not go through the whole car, as not everything is okay. The front brakes have been changed and there are new stabilizer uh, linking rods. But apparently the rear did not deserve any attention. So the discs are a bit thin, but the pads are worn quite a bit down. I did also feel that the handbrake had a bit of travel, that was an advisory. But there was no mention about any brakes. And the control technique, which is the French MOT, was done in April. And since then I've only driven about five, six times. So, this is not from my wear. This side still has a little bit of life left, but not as bad as what is happening on the other side. The handbrake is currently applied. You can see that the material is separating from the brake pad, which is not very good. The brake discs are also quite bad. Here and there some heat cracking, some bluing that they got hot. Uh, the bump stops are also terrible. I, did, I do also have new bump stops, new brake pads, new brake discs. Alright, in order to remove the brake caliper. This is a size 15. You have to hold the uh, bolt, the caliper sliding pin bolt with a size 15 and the other one is a size 13. So that's it. But in order to do this I have to move the camera. In any case, top one, bottom one, exactly the same. Once this is done we'll continue on to the next step. Then we can remove the pads. Alright, the caliper is off, it was a bit stuck on, so you may need to use a bit of leverage to get it off. Just wiggle it in there and then it will come off. So let's have a look at these pads. And then the inner pad still has a bit of life left. That would still be okay, but the outer pad on this side is worn a bit skew see over there. The pads have a, a maximum wear limit of two millimeters. Okay, this one on, on its finish is still three millimeters so that would still be okay. This one is at five millimeters. Again this side not much not really a hundred percent issue as it would still have been okay but the brake disc is looking quite rough you can see places where the handbrake as uh, pads have pretty much burnt into or rusted into seeing that the vehicle has not been driven a lot there's a lot of scoring lines it's quite rough as I said here and there are some blue spots and some very small cracking now can't see because of the rust spots as it has rained last night. Alright, so these ones we put aside so we can compare them with the new ones. Alright, I thought I'd give you a measurement of the brake disc. Minimum thickness permitted is 7 millimeters. This one comes in at 7.37 millimeters, so just a little over, a little under the, the minimum allowed thickness, so it would still be okay, but it's very very close to the minimum thickness and due for replacement. So with this micrometer, it's easy to measure because you, as you can't measure them with calipers because you'll be measuring the lip 
A new disc is 9 millimeters thick. So whilst I'm also here, I'm going to clean off this ring, the wheel speed sensor ring. It's full of brake dust. Sure, it couldn't hurt to get a bit of cleaning. Clean off the surface of the new brake. This. And there we have it. Just a bit of gentle persuasion. Put the locating screws back into place. These just hold the brake disc in. If you're wondering, it's a size T30 screw. Torx. Now just give the brake disc another clean. These are Fabi Bilstein brakes, brake discs. I don't know where they're made, but they look okay and they fit okay. It's a German company. This is a TRW braking system, so I did buy TRW pads. I didn't buy the cheapest pads and not the most expensive. A little bit in between. So here are the pads. So we also still have to wind in the piston. It does come with new screws, which is nice. Also comes with shims, although there were no shims on these to begin with, but we can put them in. Let's compare the pads. Okay, pads line up. These are uh, tapered. They sh basically should reduce noise or something. The contacts uh, should be a bit smoother. I don't know. But they were a bit cheaper than the normal ones. They do at least come with a kind of backing plate which should also help Reduce noise. All right. So wind the piston back in. I've got, haven't got the piston piston winding tool, but I saw another video about making one with a plier and the, the metal pipe. So that's what I got. All right. The piston's back in. It is a bit of a fight, but eventually it does go. You can see there's a hose clamp here because I opened the bleeder valve so that it's easier to push the, push the piston back in so you're also not fighting the fluid and therefore this is blocked so the fluid only goes out into the collection bottle it's not a lot just a little the fluid is quite clear so at least it looks like that has been serviced and now we can remove this one and There we go. Now we can unhook the brake caliper. And it should just go into place. So 
we may have to fight a bit because of the handbrake cable and various other things so just wiggle it back and forth until it's in place and then we tighten it up all right so i managed to get the caliper on started the bolts off the new bolts they use caliper bolts they get tightened down to 38 newton meters if you do not receive new bolts with pads or if you're only replacing the uh, another component and you're not getting new bolts just remember to put some thread locker on it first so I've got this torque wrench here Probably should have thought of that first. And it's starting to rain and I am working outside. This is not going to plan. to get it a nice <sighs> dropping of dirt thanks for watching the left side of this car hopefully the right side goes quicker